Today, on a promise-filled edition of Fixing the Money Thing. The same people that are in financial mess 10 years ago are in financial mess today. The same people that are sick are sick today. And they keep saying, well, I don't God, you know, God's going to do that. God's, God already has done it. But you have to participate with Him to bring the legality of heaven to bear in your life. By how? By taking the promise as it is fast. Do you need an anchor? Find out today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years, we lived in a financial, chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, you're living like many of my people are, living in debt. He said, I want my people free. Your financial freedom is closer than you think. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life, defeated his debt, and set him free. Financial problems, they're slow death. We're trying to change the way you think about money. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Well, welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. Again, it's great to be with you today. We've yes. been talking all week, Drenda, about the power of a promise and about this photograph. It's been great, too. It's awesome. Our daughter, eight hours apart, a tumor in her abdomen, and instantly healed at night while she slept, losing 13, losing 13 pounds, nine inches in her waist. Her back was healed mm. completely. These are dramatic. This is a dramatic picture. There, nothing explains or gives evidence to the power of God than a real story. We're going to continue today, as we said we yes. would, on this topic. Yes, and I love, I love Gary that, you know, the doctor even said, I can't explain this. I don't know what happened, but yeah. whoever did this for you did you a huge favor. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. great, you know. Right. Uh, you, the, you, you can't explain this. This is the power of God. Right. And we believe in the power of God because we've seen Amen. it so much, haven't we? And we have emails coming we in, do. too. We do. We have lots of emails, and we appreciate so your emails. You're experiencing the power of God, and that's why we yes. do the program, is so you can experience the power of God. Yes. And so let's take a look at that. Here's Peter, and he says, Hi, Gary. Just wanted to thank you for your teaching. A friend of mine introduced me to the Revolution Now teachings, which flipped my lid. My wife yeah. and I decided to help our old church, which was struggling to pay for the church building rent. We committed to paying the rent for one year, and from our first payment, we have seen the power of God move. Below is just a quick point form of testimonies. Uh, my wife and I were cheated out of $20,000 by a family member. At the time, we had one of our properties just go on the market for sale. It was a real challenge because I did not want to lose the relationship, even though I was hurt and angry. I paid the church rent and asked God for the money to be restored. Our house sold the first day $35,000 over asking price. So, they so got not that only was it restored, back. they got yeah. the 20000 back. Yeah, that's they got more pretty than good, that back. Pretty good sale. And uh, they said they had another commercial lease that uh, had difficulty with it. And the, the lease has now been renegotiated. And the terms are exactly what they wanted. They said there are so many more testimonies we could share, Gary. Thank you again for your teachings. Amen. So it's awesome. We love to hear your stories. We love. Yes, we do. We've, we've seen God do so many things. We have so many th stories. stories. We have thousands are, of stories, stories ourselves. But how do the stories happen? How, how did these things happen? That's what, we, what we're talking about today on yes. Fixing the Money Thing. And let's go to Faith Life Church, where we took about a month to cover this to make sure people got the principle, power of a promise. Do you need an anchor? From the Power of a Promise series, now on Fixing the Money Thing. Precious promises. We participate with God through His promises. How do we participate with God? We participate with what He wants to do, what He wants to make sure we have. Based on His promise, we participate with the divine nature by accepting the promise as fact instead of something that could possibly happen. I have it. I have it. He has given you everything that pertains to life. Amy says, I am healed. healed. When they laid hands on her, nothing changed. The next day, nothing changed. The next day, nothing changed. But she said, I am healed. I am healed. I'm not waiting to be healed. Most people you talk to are saying, I'm waiting for God. I believe God will. I believe God is going to. It's always future tense, is it not? And nothing ever changes, does it? 
The same people that are in financial mess 10 years ago are in financial mess today. The same people that are sick are sick today. And they keep saying, well, I don't God, you know, God's going to do that. God's, God already has done it. But you have to participate with him to bring the legality of heaven to bear in your life. By how? By taking the promise as it is fact. By faith. You see, without agreeing, it's done. See, without agreement, without faith, heaven legally cannot invade your world. So faith says, it agrees with what heaven says, you have the promise, you have the check, you have the signature, based on how big God is, you know he can pay the check, so if I gave you the check, you would on the way home think I have the money to go to buy, to buy groceries, right? Because you have my check, right? It is no different. Faith is, I said last week, faith is the substance of things hoped for and is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is agreement with the promises. The agreement with the promise of what God said is the evidence, all the evidence you need because you got his signature. When you then declare it is finished, you are then essentially releasing heaven's authority into that situation. So Amy says, I am healed. She was not manufacturing in her mind. She was not saying, I need to get my confession right. She knew that she was healed. And she didn't care what her body said about it. She knew that God cannot lie, and she was healed. So two weeks later, she went to bed, and bam, instantly, she was healed. Okay? I have made you the father of many nations. Got to get this. You've got to get this. We have been trained to touch, see, see, and feel to verify to us that something's changed. That is not how heaven works. We have the promise, okay? It is absolutely vital that you, as James, the second chapter says, a man looks at a mirror, leaves the mirror, and actually forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks steadfastly, this is first chapter, verse 22 of James, but the man who looks steadfastly, intently into God's mirror, his word, will have what it says. So it's, it's important. Galatians chapter 4. And this is a crucial, crucial part of the principle. Verse 21. Tell me you who want to be under the law, that's the do's and don'ts, are you... Not aware of what the law says, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman, that's Hagar, remember? Hagar, Sarah's maid, was born in what kind of way? Your neighbor should have this underlined. Look right now, check his Bible. The word ordinary way should be underlined. If he's using a cell phone Bible, it should be bolded in bold and whatever. The normal way is the slow way, the natural way, the nine-month way, as fast as you can run way. It's like if you said, I'm, I want to get out of debt. And you look at the debt and you go, that's huge. I don't make enough money, but I possibly could work five jobs. I could, I could, I could grip my teeth. I could make it work. We could, I could do five jobs. It's filtering everything through the natural, slow way. And you will never enjoy the benefits of the kingdom that way. But his son, born of the free woman, was born, and this, if this is not underlined in their Bible, I don't know their name. <laughs> How was Isaac born? As a result of a promise. If you don't get anything out of these three weeks, you have to have that. Because it was impossible for a baby to show up. Sarah's womb was dead. There was no possibility. It was over. She's too old. It's not, I don't care how, you know, whatever. It just couldn't, couldn't happen. But she had a baby. Tell me how. The promise. How was Amy healed? By his stripes. I have been healed. It does not say I will be healed. It says I have been healed. That's how she was healed. So, he was born as a result of a promise. You see, what, the, what you have to understand is the promise, think of a seed, has within itself the ability to germinate its own future. 
a seed you throw into the dirt that has nothing there, and you come back a few months later, and there's actually food there. There's a, there's a plant there. How did that get there, out of that dead dirt? I mean, it's not dead if you're a farmer, but, you know, there's all kind of organisms and things. But, you know, to us, looking at dirt, it looks like it's just dirt. You know, it's just dead. There's a plant there. How did that happen? It wasn't the dirt that did it. It was the seed that did it. In the right environment, the seed produced its own identity from the DNA and life that was there. It produced after its own kind, and it produced, it had the ability to produce that. So the word of God, the promise of God has, remember this, the power to produce itself in your life. You are a spiritual incubator. Your spirit man incubates. If you put the word of God in there and you keep it there, it will incubate itself and produce after itself. The promise has the ability to produce, even if you don't have a clue how it could possibly happen, you just need to receive the promise. Does that make sense? That is so crucial. This, is, this goes beyond touchy feeling. Can I get the T-bar working? Can I have the, do I have any possibilities? No, you don't. You would have already done it. You don't have any possibilities. The point, of, the point of pain in your life has no possibilities or you have already fixed the point of pain. You've got to have something else. You've got to have something bigger than yourself because you can't fix it. The promise has in itself, if you simply receive the promise because who gave the promise, and receive it, you don't know how that happens, but by itself, the promise will produce the answer. That's the key. Then it goes on down here in verse number 28. Now you brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. At that time, the son born in the ordinary way persecuted the son, born by the, and this should be underlined in, your, in their Bible, or I want their name again. So Isaac was conceived by a promise, but born by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? Born. So what you need in your life is the conception of God possibility in your life and the ability to carry it out. You need the Holy Spirit to help you carry out God's design for your future because it's going to be bigger than you. You with me so far? Okay, let's move on to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. All right. When God, number 13, when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Now, what is God saying? All right, so let's, let's define this thing. When God said... Well, let me put it in our day. If I said to you, I want to buy your land, you would say, great. But you're not going to take just my word for it. You're going to get a contract. Two things. My word, I, I said I want it, but you're going to verify it with the contract that has the, the details in it. That's called a sworn statement. You can write that in your, in your page there, a sworn statement. You go to, you go to court. You put your hand on the Bible, you raise your hand. You know, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing the truth to help you, God? I do. What are you saying? You're saying that there is a penalty for perjury and that the government, before God, you're saying, I, God, deal with me if I lie. God, the higher authority that has the authority and power, let him deal with me if I am lying. It's called perjury. It's illegal. So if... If uh, you were renting a, an apartment and the landlord came to you and said, okay, it's $5,000 this month, you would run and grab the lease and you would say, is your signature on there? Yes. Mine's on there? Yes. We have a sworn statement, a contract that states the details. And so it goes on and says, here's how it works. Verse 16, men swear by someone greater than themselves and the oath, the contract, the sworn statement, the deposition, the affidavit, if you will, confirms what is said and puts an end to all arguments. So the lease, no, it's only $500 a month. It's not $5,000. I'm not paying you $5,000. We came into agreement. We have a sworn statement, a contract. This is the details. It puts an end to all arguments. All right, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, 
He confirmed it with an oath. So get the picture. There's no one higher than God. God couldn't put his hand on another government, another authority higher than himself to swear by. He promised already, but he wanted to give an oath. He wanted to make a sworn statement that was that there was no one else higher than him. So because there was no one else higher than him, he gave the promise and he also gave an oath himself based on who he was as well. Does that make sense? If God failed, let's go on here. Unchanging nature of his purpose, very clear to the heirs of what was promised. He confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things, two things, he said it and he swore by it, in which it is impossible for God to lie If he lied, all of creation would implode within a millisecond. Because the Bible says creation is held together by the power of his word. He created everything seen by his word. If there was a slight chance that he could renege on his word, all of creation would implode instantly. It is impossible for him to lie. Understand that. It is impossible for him to lie. If you don't believe me, watch the sun come up. It comes up. Every day. Romans, first chapter, nature declares the glory of God. It's impossible for God to lie. All right? So it says, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope. This Greek word for hope does not mean I hope so. It means confident expectation. So we fled to take hold of confident expectation of what? The promise. You follow me? He's talking about when he gave Abraham the promise. We flee and take hold of this confident expectation, all right, offered to us that we may greatly be encouraged. We have this confident expectation, this hope, as an anchor. That's why I named today's topic, you need an anchor. An anchor for the soul realm. Our soul is our emotions. Our emotions are fickle. They follow everything. They don't know anything. If you say boo, they go what? You know, they they don't know. Our emotions, you cannot live by your emotions. Emotions follow. They are never designed to live by your emotions. So our emotions need to anchor to something to hold them in the face of difficulty. Think of a a roaring river and a boat anchored. It's steady, it stays put because of the anchor, no matter the pressure. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. When you are convinced that God can pay the check, no matter what the force of the current against, the circumstances against your life, you are held in peace, firm and secure when you hold on to the promises. That just, I tell you what, you need to take that one home with you. <laughs> it enters, now listen, this, this hope, this confident expectation enters the inner sanctuary. This is the Holy of Holies. I want you to picture a courtroom in heaven. Okay, this hope, this confident expectation is in heaven, behind the curtain, in the Holy of Holies, in the courtroom of heaven, where Jesus, who went before us, has entered, please underline this, he has entered into the courtroom of heaven on whose behalf? Our behalf. This confident expectation of God's promises, this confident expectation is in the inner sanctuary, the courts of heaven. But Jesus went there on our behalf. He is our high priest, the Bible says, A high priest is the mediator between God and man. Jesus went behind the curtain into heaven itself to make sure that he made it legal and that he makes sure that we have access to everything God wants us to have. Does that make sense? Jesus went on our behalf into the courtroom of heaven saying, no, they're innocent by my blood. And the Bible says we are a co-heir with Christ. Every single promise is yes and amen because Jesus has entered on our behalf and made it legal for us to access what Adam lost. You can clap anytime you want to. That's powerful stuff. So my daughter was healed 
because she had access behind the curtain to what God legally could do and has the power to do through Jesus. Remember 2 Corinthians 1.18? Every promise is yes and amen. So we say the amen if we're in Christ. If we're in Christ, we're behind the curtain. Legally, we have access to all of what heaven says. We say the amen. She simply said the amen. She believed the promise and the power of the spirit then brought to pass the conception of the promise that she received in her spirit when she said, it is finished, I am healed. She had no clue how that would happen, when that would happen, that didn't matter. She knew God could not renege on his promise and she said, I am healed. And two weeks later, she was, it showed up by the power of the spirit. And it will do the same thing in your life. The same thing in your life. Stop the begging, stop the crying, stop the weep. That is not how heaven works. Heaven works by participating with the divine nature for something that's already been finished. You have the promise. Step into it.